What is up guys? Chaos here. This is a Call of Duty video and yes, it is on a Sunday. It's not a Sunday COD History Community Top 10, but it is a Top 10 nonetheless. We are going to go over the 10 dumbest gimmicks in COD History. And for everybody that asks me basically every single day, no, the Call of Duty Top 10s are not dead on the channel. We will probably be bringing some new series when Black Ops 4 launches, but I thought it was best to give the COD History Community one a bit of a rest. That doesn't mean it's dead forever, so don't think that if you're a fan of it. But yeah, that is the story at the moment. And if you guys want to interact with me about any Top 10s, Call of Duty, Fortnite, whatever, definitely join the Team Chaos Discord. The link is in the description. But now, we're going to go over a suggestion that I got from somebody over on Discord, my boy Price, and he said, what about the dumbest gimmicks in COD History? Now, Call of Duty is a series that has changed quite a bit throughout the years in an effort to stay on top of the pack. That's, that's just the competitive nature of the market. And while those changes have definitely worked throughout its lifespan, there have been plenty that didn't really fly with the community. And those are the ones that we're going to be going over. These are going to be changes to Call of Duty mechanics or design that were intended to shake things up a bit, but ended up just annoying people or even driving them away from the game. So uh, without further ado, drop a like for a Call of Duty Top 10 and let's get started. Kicking off our list is the infamous SATCOM. Who puts a freaking UAV on the ground in the grass? You probably knew it was going to be on here. You just didn't know where. Now, Call of Duty Ghost was full of weird changes, but this one was one that ended up going down in infamy. As opposed to having the standard UAV or recon plane from previous games, which worked well, Ghost tried to encourage teamwork by replacing UAVs with SATCOMs, which were little boxes you dropped on the map and you stacked with your teammates to eventually get a full-fledged grown-up UAV. This was such an unnecessary change to a system that had had no problems ever to begin with. Nobody ever complained about UAVs, and it just caused more annoyance than anything else. Keep UAVs in the air and off the ground, and you will probably never see this happen again in Call of Duty's history, and I promise you, Infinity Ward will not have anything to do with this for Call of Duty 2019. This month's giveaway is for a new PlayStation 4 console. All you have to do to enter is drop a like on this video, be subscribed to the channel, and turn on your notifications so you never miss an upload. And in the comment section, let me know why you want to win the PS4 and include your Twitter handle so I can contact you if you're the winner. The winner will be announced at the end of the month. At number nine, character customization. All right, all right, hold on, hold on. Let me explain what I mean. Character customization is definitely a great thing, and it's something that multiplayer games should have. However, I think it's safe to say that the character customization we've gotten in the last few COD games, well, it's been pretty lackluster, and it seems more and more like the devs include it just to say they have it. World War II was the worst that we've had in a while, as you just chose between a handful of preset faces, and then you can just change the uniform. And of course, you have to get the uniforms out of supply drops. Now, hopefully... Future COD games will have a more extensive character customizer to make your character feel like your own instead of just a collection of micro DLC. And I go back, and it was micro DLC as well, but I go back to Advanced Warfare. Yes, you had to get a lot of it out of supply drops, all of it, maybe, I don't remember. But that character customization was at least in depth. There were some really cool characters in that. We seem to be digressing every year. So hopefully... Hopefully Black Ops 4 uh, brings us back up and we really get to own our character because that's important to a lot of people. At number 8, freaking night maps. Now I know a lot of people love night maps and I'm the same way, but what I'm referring to for this entry is a map remake with the lights off like what Treyarch did with Black Ops 3 a time or two. I think it's pretty awesome to go get original maps with different environments, like with less lighting or with different weather effects. But when we get a new map, I'm, I'm, I'm saying new, okay, that's just a remake of an existing map with a lighting change, I think it's safe to say that it's just a half-assed attempt to get people to play the game a little more. Now, I hope in the future we get more original night maps instead of just the devs switching the lights on or off with existing maps and releasing them as DLC. I love night maps, but give us original night maps speaking of maps we're gonna just we're gonna encompass one map for the number seven spot today can you guess what that map is i'll give you two seconds to guess in the comment section one two free fall 
Who remembers this map from Call of Duty Ghosts? Free Fall, it was supposed to be cool. It was supposed to be innovative. It was supposed to feature multiple levels in a changing environment, which it kind of did. But it all ended up being one massive headache. It literally would give you a headache or it would make your stomach hurt. Literally. The map, it just, it wasn't uncommon for players to just back out of the lobby if this map was selected for the next match. If Call of Duty ever, 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 ever decides to do a map like this again, please do it in a way that doesn't make the players physically sick. And you know what? On the other end, if the glass is half full, that's pretty impressive to make a map in a video game that can actually make you nauseous. At number six, Headquarters. World War II was the first game in the series to have a hub of an area for players to gather in between matches, show off their gear, get their supply drops, much like the tower in Destiny. But the feature quickly fell flat on its face at launch. The headquarters in World War II didn't work properly for weeks and weeks after launch, and there was also a ton of bugs after it did start working. Plus, there were a bunch of community events that were supposed to take place in HQ and they were either delayed indefinitely or just never really happened. And who can forget the whole paint jobs coming soon fiasco. Now HQ was a cool idea for sure, but its implementation, well, it was a total joke that was just put on full display on how rushed and sloppy the game actually was. At number five, you either cringe when you hear this or you smile. Weapon Variants. Now, weapon variants were first introduced in Advanced Warfare, and they are still alive and kicking well in today in Call of Duty World War II, although in a different way. The weapon variants first appeared as actual game-changing things that could give you a bit of a boost to your performance, and then they were brought back in the same way for Infinite Warfare, but in World War II, they were toned down a bit to be only cosmetic changes with XP boost. Now, I think it's safe to say that no one really cares that much about the variants. Are they cool? Sure. But what the variants represent is really the problem, because in Advanced Warfare and Infinite Warfare, the variants were insanely unbalanced, and in World War II, the variants are just pointless micro DLC in a game that barely had any content to begin with. So, where's the middle ground? Let's stick with variants and let's talk about attachment variants at number four. This Black Ops 3 feature, well, you, you decide. I love Black Ops 3, but this feature, I, I just, I felt like it was pointless that I even put, I, I just, I don't know, I, it's on the list because of that. BO3 was infamous for having tons and tons of pointless stuff in the supply drops in order to make it harder to get the weapons. And one of those pointless things were attachment variants. These were cosmetic changes to various attachments for all the guns that varied in rarity, meaning there were probably a couple hundred of them in the drops. Now, were some of them cool? Absolutely. But are those handful of cool variants worth it? Absolutely not. The attachment variant system was very obviously just a way to kind of pad out the supply drops. And if they decide to bring them back for Black Ops 4, I hope at least we can choose the ones we want and buy them directly instead of having to wade through tons of them in supply drops. At number three, support streaks. They were first introed back in Modern Warfare 3 and they've gotten a pretty mixed reception. As opposed to traditional streaks, support streaks do not reset upon death and they encourage the less skilled players to run them as a way to still provide for support for your team in the form of UAVs, ballistic vests, SAM turrets, and other non-lethal things except for the stealth bomber. I know, I know, the no-skill multi-kill, which I have no clue how it was put in the support category. Now, support streaks have been brought back as different perks in various Call of Duty games as a way of trying to get lesser skilled players engaged with the game, but... The problem lies with this system, and it's, it's annoying as hell to the players who actually earn their streaks. Streaks are supposed to be earned. That's what makes them more rewarding. Running support streaks or the support perks like, like requisitions just makes you look well, kind of lame because you're not confident enough to go get those streaks legitimately. And I'm not talking down to people that aren't as good at the game. Go get better, and once you earn those streaks, it's going to mean a lot more to you. At number two, speaking of streaks... Riley. <laughs> Riley well, used to be a major selling point for Call of Duty Ghosts, but ended up just being another gimmick. Riley is a German Shepherd that plays a somewhat large part in the campaign, but is reserved to a kill streak reward in the multiplayer, and that is where he fell apart. The AI for Riley is extremely dodgy at best, and sometimes he'll get you a bunch of kills, or sometimes he'll just run around and do nothing. Ghost was advertised as a game where you got to play as one of the epic attack dogs that you called in Black Ops 1 and 2, but you could only actually do that in the campaign. In the multiplayer, Riley was just he, well, I don't know. He, he was, he was something. He was a gimmick, I guess. And the final gimmick today, XO suits. Let me say it again. Exo suits. You guys probably saw it coming a mile away. The exo suits are pretty much the epitome of a gimmick in the Call of Duty series, especially back in the Advanced Warfare days when they were just good for double jumping and a little thrust here and there. 
The exosuits were introduced as a way to spice up the COD franchise and get people interested again. But uh, the way they were implemented was just not it, a lot of well, a lot of people just wrote it off altogether and just chose to barely use them or sit in a corner and not use them at all. Now, I think the big problem was the map design because even though the movement of the exosuit games was different, the map design was the same three lane setup as always. So the advanced movement wasn't nearly as integral to the gameplay as it would be in a game like Titanfall or Lawbreakers. And never thought I'd compare COD to Lawbreakers, but all in all, I know uh, there were people who enjoyed exos, but I think we can all agree that they were kind of a gimmick and I'm pretty glad they're gone now. And I know they were an innovation to try to make things new, but in the end, it just didn't work out that way. And there you have it, my friends. Those are 10 gimmicks in COD history that just didn't go over well. And every game has gimmicks. I'm not hating on Call of Duty at all, but there have been some questionable things that they have done under the banner of innovation or trying to change things up. And that's not necessarily a negative in saying they're doing them for bad things. They want their franchise to succeed. And sometimes, well, sometimes you look a little down the horizon, maybe a little farther than you should, and it just doesn't go well. You guys let me know what your least favorite gimmick was on this list. If you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like. Make sure you're subscribed. Turn on your notifications. That's not a gimmick. That is the only way you can guarantee to see the videos, hopefully, on the channel, and I'll see you guys soon.